Hey, JD Aliens, welcome back to the show. So I was washing my bike here and I decided to go ahead and just kind of let you know what I've done to it. So a lot of y'all don't know, but I really love mountain biking, like getting on the trails and stuff, not just on the sidewalk in the street. Uh, so a few years back, I bought this bike. It was, it's a Mongoose XR, XR Pro, that's what it is. And I got it for like 200 bucks, right? In the stores, if you can actually find one, there's no bikes left right now. But if you can actually find one of these online, it's probably a three, $350, $400 bike. I got this bike six years ago for about 200 bucks and I rode the crap out of it. And it is a Walmart bike, so a lot of like hardcore bike enthusiasts would probably say, like get a real bike. But this is probably one of the best big box like Walmart or department store bikes you can get uh, as far as features and um, as far as durability. But it is still not compatible to a, uh, a bike shop bike, such as a Trek or, you know, something like that. So I rode the crap out of it stock for, I don't know, six years, maybe four, right? And uh, something happened to the brakes. They just weren't working anymore. And then I decided, okay, I just need to get a real bike. So I started saving up. <laughs> I started saving up because I wanted a real bike. Real bikes, the base models, like the super duper base models costs anywhere between $600 starting out and they can go all the way up to the double digits, okay? So the one I was looking at was a Marlin 7. I'm about to get attacked here, I can hear it. Uh, the one I was looking at was a Marlin 7. And walking out of the store with that thing, I was gonna spend about $9.50 after tax and everything. I saved up the money for, I don't know, maybe six months. And I went into the store and I thought to myself, man, I cannot imagine spending this much money on a bike and I still need to do things to it. <laughs> you know, I'm walking out of the store spending a thousand dollars on a bike and I still would want to upgrade some things because it doesn't come with everything I like. Plus they only had two colors and I didn't like either one of them. So I said, man, should I invest a hundred dollars to put into my brakes and then possibly have things to fix later on into this bike that I've had for six years that uh, only cost about $200. And even if I bought it brand new, it's a $400 bike. So should I do that? Or should I just spend a thousand dollars on a brand new real bike and then still have to upgrade it? I opted to just take the, take the road of uh, upgrading this myself. So what I did was I started upgrading, man. And so the total cost of everything I've done to this bike is roughly $930 just in upgrades, okay? I'm not even counting the purchase price because that was literally six years ago. I've got my money out of that and it was only 200 bucks. So if you even add my purchase price of the bike, it's still $1,132. But let me show you what I've done to it. So I'll, I'll dry it off later. I was washing it, but I'll dry it off. Let me show, show you what I've done. The first thing was the brakes. Come on down here. And I've upgraded from the disc brakes that it had with, with, um, with the mechanical brakes. I've upgraded to the Shimano uh, hydraulic brakes. So for those of y'all that don't necessarily understand how my, mountain bikes work, usually you know, you pull on the cable and it squeezes the brakes mechanically. These are just like cars. There's fluid in here. It's a hydraulic brake. The next thing I did was the fork. So come around to the front fork. These bikes, uh, pretty much all department store bikes come with a set of forks with shocks, right? And the shocks are actually trash because they're spring loaded and they're super heavy. So I decided to go ahead and upgrade this to the RockShox Recon RL. Now, the reason I chose this fork right here is because it has a lockout up top. And it's, you know, it's, it's a really great uh, set of forks for a bike, but I needed this lockout because once you're riding sometimes like either, either on the street or on a trail, you want a nice rigid ride because you don't want all that spring and it will tire you out, especially if you're like riding on concrete and the bike is just absorbing all of your force. So you just lock it out and it has, I think six steps to where you can tighten up the tension and lock it out uh, completely. So I definitely enjoy that having there. And of course, for those of y'all who know uh, Rock Shocks RL or Recon RL shocks, you know you got that rebound adjustment at the bottom. So that was the second thing I did. This bike actually came with a huge stem that stuck out like that bar. And I think it was like a 90 millimeter stem. It was stuck out 90 millimeters. This one, I brought it back. I wanna say this one is like a 50 or something like that. And uh, I brought it back just to adjust my riding position. So I, I changed out the stem here, brought it back a little bit. Then I changed out these handlebars. I didn't really need to. These are just a few millimeters wider than my original hand, handlebars, but these are the 50-50 handlebars. And I, I wanna say this is about, oof, I can't, like 175 millimeters wide. I'm not a small guy. I'm sitting at about 235 pounds and I'm relatively wide. So when I put my arms out, I kind of want them right out. 
and the handlebars I had before, they were kind of in a little bit. So I don't know, some people, you know, you get on this bike, you feel like you're coasting like Superman or riding an airplane or something, but this feels really comfortable for me. I haven't changed out the headset. Uh, I might, it's a cheap upgrade. It's like 20 bucks to change out the headset in here and get this all tightened up. But right now it feels extremely sturdy. This is a good ride and fit right here. Next on the list was I started working on the, uh, the, the drivetrain. So my gears, I actually dialed them in pretty good for stock, okay? But I knew I needed to change out these gears and, and, and upgrade the drivetrain. So the first thing I did was um, change out the cog. Okay, so the rear cog was, it was actually a two by, no, it was a three by eight. I've converted this to a one by 11. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Wait a minute. Okay, yeah, there is 11 in there. <laughs> I missed that small one down there. But yeah, so this is a one by 11 that I've converted it to. So I've changed out the cog to a, a, a SRAM cog. And then uh, the next was the derailleur. So I had to change out the, to the uh, SRAM NX derailleur 11 speed. And this thing right here is clutch, pun intended. This thing is so awesome. It's so smooth, quiet. Every time you hit the, the shifter, all you hear is thunk and then it's in the next gear and it's riding so smooth. You definitely got to get it dialed in perfect, but once you get it dialed in, it is a smooth shifting and sh uh, smooth ride. Then up front, this was actually the last thing I did. Uh, I, I just actually changed this out yesterday. This, if you uh, can get in there, Mr. Cameraman, if you can get in, in there, you'll see that I've actually changed out the bottom bracket, which was straight up garbage. So the bottom bracket was kind of rusted out. Well, it wasn't rusted. It was just, it was nasty. All the bearings started coming out and stuff. It was grinding and my bike just wouldn't ride anymore. So that kind of forced my hand. So what I've done is I've converted it to the, um, the SRAM dub bottom bracket. Then I just threw on the SRAM NX uh, crank set with the 30 tooth uh, chain ring there. I also had to change out the uh, chain. So that's an added cost of about 20 to $22 as well. Since we're sitting right here, let's take a look at this uh, rear shock right here. So the, the bike that I originally wanted, the, the Trek Marlin 7 does not have a rear suspension at all. So that would have been something I would have probably missed a lot. So I've changed this out to the DNM uh, shock right here. I don't know actually what it's called. Okay, there's the number right there. But this seems to be the shock of choice for people who wanna do a nice budget uh, bike build. Uh, it, it has all the components you're gonna need. It does have a lockout right here in case you wanna do that. Um, in case you wanna lock out and get a nice rigid ride. And then you have your uh, bottom rebound um, adjustments right there. So yeah, that is the rear shock. We've done the front shock. And what else have I upgraded on this bike that was major? Oh, I did do the gear shifter. So when we talk about the drivetrain and converting from a three by eight to a one by 11, you do take off the gear shifter on the left-hand side. And then you get this SRAM GX. So I have a GX component here from SRAM, but the rest of the drivetrain is a NX Eagle on the back. So that's that. Now, what was another major thing I've done to this bike? Let me think about this. Whoo, okay. I think we're almost there, but I got two more components actually. I did not change out the wheels. What I did was I went ahead and converted them to a tubeless setup. And then I went ahead and bought some new wheels. These are the Continental Cross Kings. I pretty much maxed out the size here. This is a 29 inch tire. So I've maxed out the size with a 2.2, or I'm sorry, 29 by 2.2. So I don't really have much more room here to fit a bigger tire in there. And I'm running the same tire on the front and the back. And yes, I have converted this OG Mongoose 29 inch wheel to tubeless because uh, this is actually a double walled rim right here. So it can actually hold that pressure and it is a tubeless setup. So I'm actually kind of proud of that. So the Marlin 7 does not come with a dropper seat, okay? That my friend is a dropper seat. What do you need a dropper seat for? For all you people who don't know much about mountain bike riding, when you're going downhill, you do not want to be sitting up on your bike. That is a bad idea and a good way to lose all your front teeth. What you do is you drop down this dropper seat, your weight pushes it down, then you can scoot your butt back and down. That way it shifts the weight of the bike to the back of the bike, and that way you won't roll over that hill. Once you're done, you hit this lever right here, bam, and it is up. So this bike, uh, it, it does not have an internal wiring or routing system. So I, I just drilled a hole into the frame right there, covered it up with some silicone and did the internal wiring or internal routing for this uh, KS dropper post right here. Love this dropper post. This has been a great addition to my bike. Love it, love it, love it. I think that's all of the 
upgraded components. I've changed out the pedals. I mean, seriously, the only thing left on this bike that's actually stock that actually came with the bike is the frame and the wheels. And of course, all the little bearings and stuff like that. But yeah, everything else has been either upgraded or changed out. And total cost without all the, you know, the, the jewelry, like this uh, seat post clamp right here, like I don't count that stuff because, you know, you buy that kind of stuff anyway to kind of dress up, dress it up with some personality. But total cost is about $9.39 or something like that, right? And I had so much fun doing it. I started upgrading this thing back in April. It is now the end of, actually it's the middle of July. So I started upgrading uh, at the beginning of April and I'm finished with it. It's actually finished right now. I'm finished at the, uh, the middle of July and $940 later, I have the perfect bike for me. And to add to that, I've actually had the opportunity to learn a lot more about bikes than I already did because I never took it to the bike shop. I did all this myself. I now had, because I had to purchase a couple of specialty tools for the bike, I have the tools to work on the bike and the know-how. And I got to upgrade as I rode. So I didn't just drop the whole $940 at one time. It just came over the course of those uh, few months right there. And I was riding as I was going. And it was just a fun experience. I would have never gotten that with that Marlin 7. So for 940 bucks, it was about 970, I think, for the Mar Marlin 7 walking out of the door. I feel like I have a much better bike for the same price, actually a few dollars left, less, a much better bike with a whole bunch more added upgrades to it. And if you actually price this bike out with all of its upgrades and features, if you went on to Trek's website right now, you would probably price out a $3,200 bike to get everything you're getting right here. Now, as far as quality of components, I don't know. That's, you know, it's, it's all subjective. As far as quality of the ride, that's all subjective because some people would get on this and say it doesn't ride like a $3,200 bike. To me, I don't even know what that feels like to be honest with you, <laughs> but I know it rides a hell of a lot better than it did before. And it is, it, you could definitely keep up with a $2,000 bike. Something that you would go to the bike shop and buy for $2,000, this would definitely keep up with it and hold up in that, in that uh, bracket right there. So was it worth doing all this work to it and spending the amount of money on this bike? A lot of hardcore bike enthusiasts, I call them snobs, <laughs> would say no, those parts deserve a better frame. But honestly, man, this is actually a really good frame. It's got good wells, it doesn't creak or anything like that. If you actually take the time and do your job right and put the right components on it, I think you got a great bike build here. So for those of you guys, you know, who are wanting to do some mountain biking and you know, you either can't afford or don't want to spend the money on a real mountain bike. Hey man, think about what you already have. If you got a good solid frame or foundation of a bike, it's cool, man, just get you some tools to work on your bike yourself. I will advise you not to take your bike to the bike shop. Some of those guys, man, they're freaking idiots. <laughs> They don't know what they doing. <laughs> Either way, I am not an expert in this kind of stuff, but what I do know is life is short. You might as well be getting your jam on, and while you're jamming, you might as well be getting your ride on too, man. Go ahead and customize your bike and upgrade that thing, man. I gotta get out of here. I'm gonna dry this thing off. I gotta wet it up again and then dry it off. Then I'm gonna go take me a ride, man. So you know, I got to get out of my yard so I can finish up my job. All right, keep being good to each other, and I'll see you when I see you. Oh, so you one of them cats that like to just run up in a place, take what you want, then leave, huh? Man, you better hit that subscribe and notification button. That way you know when I'm over here opening up new stuff. And while you're down there, you might want to consider tapping that uh, join button and becoming a member because membership has its perks. See, that wasn't so bad. All right, man, I appreciate you, and I'll see you at the next one. Is that why you are here?